My top tips for community-led housing groups who are applying for a mortgage, it's really important to understand your business figures. They're your figures, so when I ask you a question, you need to understand where they are. Have a clear direction on the group's goals and what your objectives is that you want to achieve. And have plans in place for when people are ready to exit. We need to understand that strategy as well. My uh, three tips for community-led housing groups considering uh, approaching a lender for a mortgage uh, would be firstly to be really open and honest with one another as to what your requirements are and what your individual circumstances as members of a group are so that you've got an agreed vision. Secondly, I would suggest it's important to talk early to lenders and indeed to valuers and lawyers to get uh, a really good perspective as to what their expectations will be and to make sure that the documentation and structure of the proposal is going to be viable. And thirdly, I would suggest that it's important to be realistic about costs and timescales when considering a proposal a proposal of this kind. My three top tips for community housing groups that are looking to raise a mortgage. I think first and foremost um, engage with lenders very early on in the process. Lenders can often provide you with advice, practical tips and solutions um, against problems you may come up against. Um, I think you need to ensure that the route you're going down or the path you're taking is one that is actually financeable. So a good example of that is um, if you're going to take on a leasehold property, lenders have very fixed views about how long um, or the minimum length of any, that any lease may be. So it's important that you understand what a lender's requirements are. So engage with funders early on. I think the second tip is that you need to have um, a well thought through business plan by the time you get to that point. It should address a number of things. It should talk about who you are, what it is you want to achieve, um, what sort of social impact you're hoping to um, achieve or to deliver. It should talk about the governance and management of the organisation, who is in charge, who's actually going to be behind the decision-making process. And you should also in, um, make sure that you can provide um, a thorough cash flow forecast or business plan so a lender will want to understand how you're going to repay the loan. Have you thought it through? Have you included all the costs in your model? Um, and they would also be looking for you to have stress tested that business plan as well. So um, you've assumed mortgage payments of a certain amount. You've assumed, for example, rent coming in. Well, what happens if interest rates rise? There is only one way interest rates are going to move, and that is up. So if interest rates move up to, say, 2 or 3%, can you still afford to um, meet your loan repayments? If not, what flexibility have you got in your model? So a lender would have expected you, by the time you get to that stage, to have thought about all those things. But again, if you've engaged with a lender early on, they can talk to you about what they're looking to see in their business plan. And I think the third tip is when you get to the point of signing a loan agreement, make sure that you thoroughly understand what is in that loan agreement. It's not just down to your solicitor to tell you that it's all right to sign the loan agreement. You need to understand the requirements on you. So first and foremost, when you actually want to draw down, a lender will have a lot of conditions precedent. And these are the things that you have to have achieved before you can actually get your hands on the money. So make sure you understand and make sure that you can actually deliver on all those conditions. And if you think there are some you can't deliver on, on then go back to the lender. Don't be afraid of saying to the lender, I cannot do this or I can do it but in a different way. So you need to understand what the conditions precedent are. You need to understand what financial information covenants are contained within the loan agreement. So what is the lender expecting of you? Are there regular requirements to submit management accounts, bank statements, annual accounts? You need to understand and make sure that you can comply with those. You need to understand what financial covenants, if any, are contained within the loan agreement because these are the things that the lender will use to measure to see whether you're performing according to plan. And if you don't, um, if you don't meet these, then effectively you are in default of your loan agreement. Which brings me on to the last point. You should understand what the events of default are within your loan agreement. It's just as you would sign up to your own personal mortgage. It's making sure you understand what you are committing to. So my three top tips uh, would be uh, plan, even if it's at an early stage, start making plans. 
my second tip would be be realistic. I see a lot of instances where people uh, have very high expectations of what can be delivered and actually they're not realistic. Uh, so always bear that in mind. My third one is talk to everybody and get advice from all sorts of different people, be it other organisations that have delivered projects similar to yours or vaguely similar, anybody that can give you guidance and help. The two common mistakes that community-led housing groups make when applying for mortgage is twofold. One is not understanding your own business plan or your own figures. And secondly, having no clear exit plans as people leave the group. There are a couple of common mistakes that groups make when they're applying for a mortgage. Um, sometimes we're approached by groups that have given a lot of thought to structure and how they're going to manage things on site as regards common meetings and uh, dispute resolution and even to the extent of who's going to cook the meals on which nights but perhaps haven't given enough thought to the real fundamental issues like the finance and the legals as regards um, the, the mortgageability of what they're looking to do. So it's important that those real fundamentals are concentrated on first and foremost. And I think the second thing is, is often groups perhaps underestimate the time scale that a project is going to take and the fact that they might lose members along the way and that may need to, to generate interest from people who weren't involved when it was first being discussed in the pub. The two most common mistakes that community housing groups tend to make is possibly firstly assuming things will be done much quicker than they are. Things can take a long time to be processed. Lenders have to go through their credit approval processes. Then there's all the documentation, etc. And it can take a long time. You know, sometimes it can take six months. So I think firstly, make sure you allow sufficient time. And I think secondly, tell the lender everything. Don't decide or selectively choose what you're going to tell the lender because it only leads to more questions so make sure you're completely transparent and open um, about the nature of the business and what it is you're trying to do and if you've been turned down by another lender it doesn't matter you know just be open. So one of the biggest mistakes that groups make when they come to see me uh, is no financial planning whatsoever or if they have made a financial plan there's no what if situations so what if the interest rate goes up by three percent or what happens if a lot of people leave the project uh, and aren't paying rent there is no uh, scenarios built into those projections the second one is people turn up with a plan but they've not been involved in drawing it up so they turn up they've got a plan but they actually don't know anything about it. They've got no idea about the uh, involvement in it, uh, what drives certain outcomes. They have no knowledge at all, and it doesn't fill uh, me with any confidence uh, that they really understand what that project's about. Co-housing groups should choose Unity Trust as their bank as we have similar values and ambitions to yourselves. We can help structure loans to suit your individual and bespoke needs and we also offer you a relationship service so you get personal service as opposed to a call centre. Well, groups can uh, have a choice now of, of ethical funders interested in community-led housing, which is great. From Ecology Building Society's point of view, I guess our unique selling point is that we can help at different stages of the process, um, both in terms of development phase, finance for the group itself, longer term funding supported by rental incomes if that's the model they're going with but we can also provide residential mortgages for individual buyers including shared ownership including restrictive sale covenants and so forth so we can give a group a really good idea as to whether their individual members requirements can be met as well as the wider development costs of the project which is really important when working out whether their exit route to repay the development loan is feasible. I think community housing groups should choose Charity Bank because we were set up to help and support community organisations. Charity Bank is a specialist bank. It is owned by charitable trusts and foundations to um, deliver good and to support communities. 
We take deposits from anyone who's kind enough to put money on deposit with us, so that's individuals, trusts, foundations, community groups, charities, and we lend that money out, but we only lend into the social sector. So we operate in a very narrow market, and because of that, we think we completely understand the market in which we operate. We're not a, a benign lender, in as much as if things go wrong, we, we do need to take actions, but if things go wrong, we work with groups and we try and find solutions um, to their problems rather than saying, well, that's it, you know, we, we're going to repossess your property. So it's about providing that help and support and a helping hand as well through the um, application process and through the approval process. About 60-65% um, of all of our loan applications come from recommendations or former borrowers. So we must be doing something right. And in fact, when we did a survey um, about 18 months ago, 99% of all our clients said they'd recommend us to someone else. So I think it's fair to say we're getting something right. I believe you should choose Triados because we've been involved in this particular sector for over 10 years. Uh, the bank has been going for 20 years in the UK. We provide advice quite happily uh, with no real need to uh, come to us for actual funding, although that's nice, but we're more than happy to have a conversation or emails, and I quite often do that, and I will talk to somebody, and then may not see them or talk to them again for 18 months. Uh, but slowly, slowly, it moves onwards with a project. Uh, we don't really have any restrictions on the amount that we can lend. So typically our minimum would be 500,000, maybe a bit less depending on circumstances, up to 15 million pounds. Uh, so really I think that covers most of the community-led organisation housing projects that I've ever looked at. Uh, and finally, because we've been in the sector for so long, um, we've developed uh, various products that can assist uh, with uh, funding and affordability in particular. Uh, and just generally, we've seen a lot uh, and we can adapt to a particular scenario. Uh, 